Hey guys, Ivan here and this video as you can see we are starting with a new physique update of Brandon Harding In case you don't know who this guy is, he has a very popular YouTube channel He often speaks about his gear use, his cycles and he's competing I think today actually or tomorrow But these photos are from two days out And the main thing we're gonna deal with here is whether he made progress in the past year or not so, last year he competed in an NPC show and he actually won the overall, but that was kind of a warm-up show for him, it wasn't a pro qualifier, so he didn't win a pro card by winning this show, but his goal was to actually win a pro card, uh, is he really ready, was he ready to win a pro card? Well, at, at this height, at around 200 pounds, that's definitely not pro-worthy physique. Some people can get away and actually win a pro card while being a little bit lighter, but not Brandon, not with his structure. He definitely needed to fill up his frame, so he tried to do that in the off-season. He got up to around 240 pounds, which is something around where I am at in my off-season, but I don't compete in classic physique. I compete in classic bodybuilding, which is a lighter division. I know classic physique is way more competitive, especially at the IBB World Championships, which I'm gonna do this year. And I'm about six foot one. I think Brandon is about the same. So in order for him to be competitive as a classic physique pro, he needs to weigh something like Chris Bumstead does in the off season. He's also similar height like us. He needs to be like 260. This was him at his last year's pro qualifier where he tried to win that pro card. He didn't do it. So as you can see, he definitely needs to fill out his frame. He definitely needs more mass if he wants to be a pro. MPC, actually IBB Pro League Classic Physique Pro. He needs more muscle. So how successful was his off-season really? This is him right now, again, at two days out of a show. And in this caption here, he writes about almost stopping the prep because he felt like he wasn't big enough. He says, though, that he's over 10 pounds heavier than last year and he says uh, in this highlighted part he says two weeks into prep and i considered pulling out stopping the diet and taking another six to eight months to grow and i hope brandon won't watch this video because i have to be brutally honest i think that would have probably been a better idea i think he definitely needed more muscle because in these photos he just doesn't look big enough no he definitely needs more muscle so he added 10 pounds, that's like 4.5 kilos, which is definitely a lot, which is a great progress, something like, it's like a top end of what you would expect in, a, in about a year of off-season. It's, it's, it's a good progress for sure, but one year, it wasn't enough for him to do classic physique. Classic physique, that's a heavy category, man. That's really competitive these days, especially. I mean, a lot of open pros downsize a little and they do classic physique. So classic physique is kind of like a bodybuilding division, really. Classic bodybuilding where I'm competing at where I am like at the weight cap that's definitely a lighter division but classic physique those guys are big so in order for Brandon to be really competitive he definitely needs to pack more muscle can he win a pro card well you know it really depends on the competition it depends who else shows up it's not up to him did he do enough to actually deserve a pro card well you know it may happen it may not if he wins it if he actually gets that pro card I don't think he will be able to do anything with it for at least a couple of years. So do I think he will win a pro card? I think probably not, but there is a slight chance. Now, interestingly, he says he added 10 pounds. He says it right here, he is 10 pounds heavier than he was last year. Take a look at what he looked like last year. Do you see those 10 pounds added? I don't know about that. I believe him, I believe him, but I don't know where did those pounds go because he doesn't look significantly bigger. Obviously, this is from the stage, so he's dehydrated and carved up, but let me show you what he looked like days before the stage. <laughs> honestly, guys, honestly, I feel like he looked more impressive last year. Maybe he is bigger now, I'm not sure about that, I'm gonna show you a comparison in a second, but if you just take a look at this photo right here, I mean the combination of conditioning and muscularity and shape and stuff like that for an amateur, it looked good, it looked pretty good, and I think he looked better than right now, honestly. Front double bicep, pretty, pretty similar, right? Let me show you a comparison actually. Photo on the left is right now, photo on the right is from last year, so do you see, what difference do you guys see, I'm really curious. I don't know, I feel like he was sharper, harder last year, I think he's a little bit softer this year, did he add more tissue? 
I don't know, maybe like compared to his head, his the rest of his body looks a little bit bigger, maybe. I mean, he says he had a 10 pounds, so let's believe him. But honestly, I don't see a, like a big difference. And I think something happened to his legs. I think his legs were rounder, fuller last year. I think he lost some of that roundness this year. Also, to me, it looks like his waist was smaller last year. And I think his arms were fuller, bigger, rounder too. There are other things to consider, guys, like the angle, like the lighting, like uh, how depleted he is, uh, how, how, how pumped is he. So many, so many different factors, but the point I'm trying to make is uh, he still needs more muscle to be actually competitive in classic physique. He has the right shape, he has the structure, he just needs more mass. I have nothing against him competing, even if he's not ready. Maybe he gains things from it, maybe his popularity rises. I compete once a year because I get paid, actually. So that's why, that's my reason. I also want to compete in Classic Physique one day, but I need to grow and I compete even though I'm not big enough, but I get paid. So if he gains anything from it, then he should do it, of course. But if he wants to be actually competitive as a classic physique pro, he needs a longer offseason, he needs more time to put on the mass. Did he progress? Maybe a little, maybe not at all. Will he win a pro card? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. As soon as I find out, I will inform you guys. So stay tuned, subscribe. If you guys have any trouble sleeping, I will suggest to you this product, it's called Vintage Bliss by the Old School Labs. It helps you sleep like a baby and it's all natural ingredients. So guys, if you want to try it out, the link is down below and if you use a code EVAN, you get a 15% discount. And if you were looking for, a, for an extra way to support me and my channel, aside from uh, clicking the like button, of course, and subscribing, this is an additional way to show your support. So thanks, guys. All right, now let's take a look at somebody who has a lot more muscle. <laughs> That's James Hollingshead. At four weeks out of Arnold Classic, he looks... Arnold Classic UK, actually. He looks freaking impressive. He looks crazy. So he's definitely going to bring the conditioning, but I don't think he ever looked this round and this full in prep. Like, he was known for being super, super massive, super big and round in the offseason. He weighs over 300 pounds, but in the prep, he usually gets much smaller, much flatter. And even though in the end he looks still much bigger than most of the guys on the stage, he doesn't really have that pop. He doesn't have that 3D round look. He is always dry and big, but never really round, you know, and full. Like Dorian Yates used to look like that back in the day. Even though he wasn't super full and round and 3D, he was beating these guys because he was drier and bigger. Now, James, this time around, has all those things, plus he looks really round, really big. What is the difference in his approach? Well, he's actually prepping alone, he doesn't have a coach, and he has like a refeed every, every week. He has a crazy cheat day. And it works for him, it works for him, obviously. He has been getting leaner and leaner, and he kept the fullness. As you can see, he's very lean. At four weeks out, he's just on time. And I hope everything else will work out, because like in those last couple of weeks, bodybuilders tend to go crazy. And I hope his peak week is going to be done properly. And I have no doubt that he will be shredded. He's at around 270 right now, guys. 270 in this shape, at his height. So he's definitely gonna push Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack is 290, that's true. He's probably gonna be a little bit lower than that because he wants to be more conditioned. But uh, he's six foot two, and James is like five foot uh, ten or eleven. So he's probably gonna look more compact. He's probably gonna look rounder. I'm really excited to finally see this go down. I still do think Andrew is probably the favorite to win this show. I mean, this guy won the world, I mean, he, he stole that show, Texas Pro, people have him, like, winning the Mr. Olympia in the future, James doesn't have that kind of hype, but honestly, looking at these photos, I mean, James, he failed last year, the Mr. Olympia, and that's what people expect of him to, to, to repeat, to do again, but I think this is going to be a completely different animal this year, and I think James is underrated right now. Again, I'm really excited to finally see it go down, but as for right now, James looks freaking impressive. 
Alright, next we have a physique update of Brett Wilkin in his off-season and this guy keeps growing and growing and every year he's bigger than the last. In the past 3 or 4 years it looks like he gained like 100 freaking pounds. I mean, he completely transformed his, his body and right now he looks definitely bigger than ever. I'm not sure exactly what his plans are. I heard something about doing one of the post-Olympia shows and trying to qualify for the Mr. Olympia 2023 that way. I'm not sure exactly which show he's gonna do but I'm pretty sure he can win one of those and get that Mr. Olympia qualification usually those shows post Olympia shows aren't super competitive but he does look very very good Last year at that Chicago Pro, he was amazing, he looked great, right after Hunter Labrada in that second place beating Rolly Winkler and so many other great guys. At the Arnold Classic this year, he was bigger for sure, but he didn't peak properly, he wasn't in great conditioning, though he didn't try to improve it for Boston Pro, he realized he needs more improvements, so he definitely made those, and the next time we see him on stage, and once his conditioning clicks, once he peaks properly, I'm sure this guy is gonna be winning pro shows, and I think he's going to be top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, no doubt, it's just gonna be a matter of time. And what the hell is Regan Grimes trying to do right now? I mean, he's 16 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, his prep has started, but apparently right now he's trying to grow, so he says grow mode. Is he really gonna grow in, in prep, you know? He, he has that approach probably, like he's gonna do some growth phase first for a couple of weeks and then he's gonna start dieting down, which is what many bodybuilders do, but it's usually for those bodybuilders who already have the size. They just want to, you know, bulk up a little bit, tone up and then just get conditioned. But Regan, he needs some serious off-season improvements. He needs some time off, like a year or two of not competing at all and just trying to grow, just force-feeding, training like a maniac, that's what he needs, I mean, he's a big guy, he's really big, but compared to the others, he still needs to fill out his frame. I think his lack of muscularity can be seen very clearly right here in the comparison against Sean Clarida, ironically. I mean, Sean is like 5 foot 1 and he weighs like 170, 80 pounds, and Regan is one of the bigger guys, Sergio too, for that matter. Both of these guys are taller and they have a lot of, a lot of size, like they are big guys in person, but on the stage for those frames that are pretty big, they need more muscle, they need to fill up. Take a look at the arms, for example. You would never say that Regan has small arms, but compared to somebody who has a more filled out frame like Sean Clarida, it's more noticeable when he stands next to him, lats, same thing, chest even too, and legs also. So Regan definitely needs a proper off-season, like two years long, and also when it comes to conditioning, I mean this right here is probably his best shape ever overall, I mean he competed at the Mr. Olympia before this show, this is one of the post-Olympia shows, and he was prepping for the Mr. Olympia with Dorian Hamilton, however for this show he was prepping with Milo Sharcher for a couple of weeks, that's when they started working, and Regan looked better than ever at this show, he was dry, he was carved up properly, and he peaked very nicely, this was his best shape ever, but as you can see he could have been leaner, Sean Clarida was leaner. And what is Regan Grimes doing about that right now at 16 weeks out of Mr. Olympia? Well, he's having cheat meals, as you can see. Now, I don't know what his approach is, I'm sure whatever, he's doing whatever Milo Sarcher is telling him to do, but I don't like seeing this, honestly. I would like to see him more focused. He doesn't have the physique like, for example, James Hollins yet, who tends to get flat very easily. Regan has an issue with getting super conditioned. Take a look at Dian Valier. He never has cheat meals in the prep. He rarely even has them in the off-season and he gets peeled. And I just know that I would love to see Regan Grimes peeled like Ian Valier. But before that, I would also prefer him to add another 20 pounds of muscle. And uh, then we would be talking about like potential top 6 Olympian. Alright, and lastly, probably the most interesting part of this video, it's Derek Lansford pretty much confirming that he's actually gonna be doing the Open. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by confirming it, but before we get to that, take a look at his physique right now. He looks freaking huge, full-blown. Uh, based on what we saw from him, all the videos and photos recently, it looked like he took some time off, off of gear. And it looks like right now he's back on it. He's definitely back on it because he looks super full, super round, freaking massive. Like, arguably bigger than, than like most open guys right now. I mean, for his frame. How many guys are this round? How many guys have freaking huge and, and big arms like this and popping chest like this? I mean, 
mean, he has basically no neck right now. I don't know what exactly his weight is right now, but after that guest posing, Honey Rambot said once that he was like 260, so I'm guessing he's somewhere around there right now. Take a look at those lats, too. <laughs> his lats are freaking insane. Like, he got so rounded up. It's ridiculous how big this guy is right now. There is no chance he's doing freaking 212. No way. But it's not just the way he looks, it's also what he posted on Instagram today. So he says one hour ago, he says, Success and achievement means nothing without growth. He says, to remain the same and to achieve the same has little value. Meaning, achieving another 212 Olympia title, the same as last year. He says, continuously raising our standards to excel at a higher level keeps that hunger inside of us. Growth on the outside is a reflection of the growth we make on the inside. Keep growing, keep getting better. As you can see, he is not exactly being direct. He rarely ever is, Derek Lunsford. But I think he, he's pretty clear with his message here. I think you can all assume that what he's saying is he's not gonna be satisfied if he wins 212 again. He wants to do more. He says he's raising his standards and he puts growth in capital letters and growth, literal physical growth is what he needs to accomplish if he wants to do the open and right now like everybody, everybody in the comment section of all Derek's posts is like, are you gonna do the 212, are you gonna switch to the open and when he writes a caption like this, everybody will think about the same thing, he didn't say I'm doing the open but I think he was as, as direct as he can be, I think this is pretty clear, I think we're gonna see Derek Lansford in the open and I think he's going to do really well. It's going to be very interesting to see him peak and get shredded without losing any muscle, without losing that fullness, that's gonna be a completely different package, but I gotta say, he is enormous, like for his frame, he has so much muscle, it's ridiculous, and also he is known for having a super small waist, great vacuum, great shape overall, he basically has no weak points, like you could say his arms could be bigger, but they are definitely not small arms, and maybe his upper chest and shoulder area could be sharper, but really, that, that's just minor details, he is a very, very complete bodybuilder, he's very well rounded up, he's big, he's full, he knows how to get in shape, and I can't wait to see him on Mr. Olympia stage in the open, because he is going to do some serious damage. What do you guys think? Where do you see Derek placing it at Mr. Olympia in the open, which I'm pretty sure he's going to do? If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.